So what do you do when everything falls apart? Total chaos, disaster, irrecoverable, nothing you can do about it. Well, that happened to me recently, and I want to share with you what I did about it. Hey everybody, this is G.P. Walsh, founder of the Master Heart Institute, creative and reconciliation. And I gotta tell you, it was a mess. It was a, it was a uh, class I was doing. And I was using a uh, new technology and a new approach, and nothing worked. At first, the video was all bad, right? It was all jumpy, it was unus absolutely unusable. Fortunately, I had some slides. Okay, I'll go through the whole thing, I'll use the slides, and I'll just speak over it, and it'll be fine, right? Not optimal, but it'll be fine. Well, <laughs> People would come in, they would hear the sound for a second, and then it would go away. they disconnect, come back in again. By the time it was done, um, everybody was just kind of chatting amongst themselves, and nobody was paying any attention to me. It was kind of like I've created a little community for them. Um, now, i got to tell you, it, this is the first time I've ever had anything. That, I've been doing this for, you know, uh, stuff on uh, YouTube since like 2010. Um, I've been doing classes for decades. This is the first time this has ever been a complete and total washout. Not only that, the replay didn't even work. <laughs> I didn't even have a replay of it with me, you know, giving the material. I mean, total loss. Complete and, uh, and, and total loss. And I have to tell you, I was a bit flustered. It was so extreme. It was so total that I, it was hard for me to keep up the energy. Right? I mean, when you're teaching, when I want to bring a, a, a subject across, you, you know, there's enthusiasm behind it, right? I'm excited about what I have to teach. But it was just like, it, was, it became painful. There was no energy. Even if I did have the recording of it, I wouldn't use it. There was no energy in it. There was no, nothing behind it. But what do you do at times like that? You know, first off, you know, it's perfectly natural for us to just feel like, to have the energy drained out of us. You know, when I'm teaching, when you're doing anything, you want your whole focus there. You want all of your energy, all of your love, all of your enthusiasm. You want it all present and available to you because that's how the, that's how you get it across. That's how you, whatever it is you're doing, whether you, you know, you're, you're alone practicing an instrument somewhere or, or teaching a class or, you know, working on, working on your taxes. You want total focus while you're doing it because that's how it, it, it goes the fastest. <laughs> it, it has the most en energy in it, it's the most accurate, and, and everything just works better, right? So when things are kind of like grabbing your attention that shouldn't normally be there, well, it has a deep effect on us. I mean, not unlike the fact, you know, that most of us trying to do anything these days are completely bombarded with, you know, email and text and Facebook and Twitter and all of the stuff that's going, now, even announcements coming, right? Right, even the, the browser says, new person on Facebook. I mean, they, I mean, it's a constant level of distraction and it does sap the energy and it sapped mine. Not pretty resilient guy. You know, I popped back pretty quick, but I gotta tell you, it was like, ugh, oh, it was really quite discouraging. Um, so what did I do? Well, I realized that I'm not gonna be, you know, if I stay in that state of just being discouraged, or angry or irritated, because I was. I was irritated at the platform and this was supposed to be a great you know, technology and it wasn't working for me at all. Um, and maybe I didn't know enough about, I don't, I don't know what, what the, the problem is. I haven't really even diagnosed it yet. It only happened a couple of days ago, two days ago to be, to be, to be exact. But that wasn't what was important. What's most important is my energetic state. The state of my heart, the state of my emotions, and really the state of my mind. Because that's the only thing that's going to bring me to the next level. And there are two things I wanted to talk about. Number one is, shit happens. Right? The idea that somehow we can get such a perfect state of mind and a perfect state of being, or attain perfect enlightenment, and nothing bad is ever going to happen again, is such a delusion. There's no such thing. It's just, you know, whether you pursue it through uh, st the, uh, through enlightenment and spiritual awakening and trying to rid yourself of all desires. Or if you pursue it through trying to build the biggest military in the world, to try to make this stable state, you're never going to do it. Life is not stable. Life doesn't want to be stable. Life isn't static. The only reason life is developed to the level that it has, and that human beings could even happen, is because life isn't static. It's constantly improving and changing and growing. 
So to accept that as a fact, to accept that there's never ever going to be a possibility that you could cover every base so that you know, so perfect security that everything is going to go the way you want it to. It's never going to happen. To let that sink in for a second, we don't have to spend our energy shoring up against what might happen. I mean, look, that's what the world does. That's what the huge investments in war and military like. It's like what might happen, you know? Somebody might do something bad. Well, yeah, that might happen. And there's no way we're ever going to stop it. And on your personal life, you could cover every single base, dot every I, cross every T, and something completely unexpected would happen. A much better approach to take is that when something unexpected, unexpected happens, we get thrown into the realm of creative attention. We get pushed into the place where suddenly something spontaneously, brilliantly creative has to emerge. Has to. Because if it doesn't, then, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, you know, wiped out. In this particular case, you know, I've, I've done things before and I've had technical failures, but there's always been something I could do to recover and keep the energy going. Forget about that and move on. This time it was total. <laughs> there was nothing, absolutely nothing I could do. So I had to take care of it. I had to deal with it after the fact. There was, you know, there was a moment where I just surrendered to it. I said, okay, this is the way it is. And I just kind of let it go. And I immediately started to feel better because I stopped fighting. There was nothing I could do. And there was nothing to do. I couldn't salvage it. It was unsalvageable. It's gone. I've, now I have completely let it go and I'm going to redo the, the, uh, the class. I'm going to redo it live um, just as soon as I make sure how it is I'm going to do it. Knowing full well that even then things could go, things could go wrong. But the important thing that I, that I gleaned from it was that the only thing that really matters is coming to a sense of confidence about our own inner resources. I'm not going to be able to stop life from throwing stuff at me. But what I can do is become so confident and so assured of my own resilience, my own creative energy, my own ability to respond to any situation with, in, with deep internal resources. Well, that nobody can take away from me. Even when it's a total disaster, what do you do next? Come sit in a beautiful park you know, by, uh, by a very, uh, an old and beautiful church and talk to people about the experience that I just had. Salvage the energy and wisdom out of it and share it. Now, there's something else I wanted to say about it as, as, as well. And, and that is the other side of the coin. Because that went the way it did, I've, I've always known that when, when things, you know, there's always the, the monkey wrench that life throws in there. There's nothing you can do about that. But sometimes when things go wrong, it's an invitation. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> It's actually a real bell. Isn't that beautiful? I wasn't expecting that in the middle of my uh, video. So as I was saying, sometimes things like that can invite you to take a look at whether or not you're on the right track. Sometimes what life throws at you is not just, just an arbitrary thing to mess you up, but it's actually an invitation to look more closely at your own energy. There's a lot of decisions I made leading up to that that were about how I was going to, uh, uh, about a new technology and a new approach and all sorts of new things I was trying to do and I was really excited about it. And now I'm sitting back and questioning, is that really what I needed to do? Is that where I needed to focus my attention? And I want my Master Art Institute to grow. I want this message of inner reconciliation to reach and touch as many people as it possibly can. I want to do whatever I can to help bring the world back to sanity and, 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 and heartfelt, compassionate cooperation and collaboration. I want to do my part to do that. 
Was I making the best choices in doing that? Or was I being distracted by a, a new shiny object, some new technology, some new way of approaching it, some new fancy thing? I mean, we're inundated with them, right? Especially if you're in business for yourself. It's endless, the stuff, all the stuff to try and the courses and the programs and the new software packages and all the stuff that you can, that you can do. So I'm asking myself now, was I off point? Did I get absorbed, did I get lost in the weeds and forgot where I was headed to? That's the question I'm deeply pondering. And I'm beginning to think that I did. I'm beginning to think it wasn't really necessary. All of those things I did. I had something that worked. It worked quite well. It didn't have everything that I wanted it to do. But it worked. It was dependable. Why did I change it? Now, if there was some guarantee that what it was going to bring would enhance my message and my purpose even more, well, it's worth looking into. But now I have to go back and question it. And I invite you to do the same thing. I'm not 100% sure right now, so I can't give you this definitive answer, you know, this is the way it is. It's the kind of thing we all have to do because we can't avoid what life is gonna throw at us, right? Nobody can. And we don't want to, because, because we don't know what, what the next pitch is going to be, right? It's that capacity to respond that is where the real freedom is. It's where the real joy is. It's, it's real where the real growth is. We find resources within us that we didn't know we had. And then the wisdom to look at the experiences we're having as a reflection of just series, a series of decisions that we've made, some of which may be very old and some of which some of which may very well not be serving us anymore. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm inviting you to do the same thing. There's a sweetness in adversity. There's, a, there's an opportunity in adversity. Don't simply try to push it away or go back to the way things were. Things aren't, you can't go home again. Things will never be the way they were a second ago. They're not supposed to be. You are growing constantly. And the way we really come to embrace that growth is by embracing the ambiguity and the unpredictability and the impermanence of life. So, embrace it. Because in that embrace, you will find yourself expanding and exploding, and you'll find resources and powers within you you never knew you had. Thank you all. Namaste.